Today I want to talk about the effects of mutations on the proteins that are encoded by genes. And so to start, let's look at a specific amino or protein that's encoded by this gene. And we're going to start off by translating this. It's a eukaryotic messenger RNA, or at least that's my intention. And so the first thing we need to do, as always, assuming this is eukaryotic, we have a 7-methylguanine cap on the 5' prime end of this transcript. And so a ribosome will bind to that cap and scan from 5' prime to 3' prime until it encounters the first start codon. And that establishes the reading frame. And the reading frame just tells us which sets of three nucleotides, which codons, are going to be read by the ribosome. So that's going to start with the first start codon, which is always AUG, and it codes methionine. And then the next sets of three until we encounter a stop codon, which is often abbreviated as an asterisk. That's where the ribosome will stop translation of this messenger RNA molecule. So GAA is glutamic acid, and AGG is arginine, and UGG is tryptophan, W. So that's the sequence of the protein that's encoded by this short gene. So now let's look at some mutations and how those can affect this gene. So the first one I want to talk about is what happens if we change this third A to a GAG? the mutation from A to G. In this case, GAG also encodes glutamic acid, the amino acid E. And so there's no change in the protein sequence. We get AUG, GAG, still glutamic acid, and then R, W, and the stop codon. This is an example of what we call a synonymous mutation. Synonymous because it does change the nucleotide sequence, but the amino acid sequence doesn't change. Then I want to show you a non-synonymous mutation. What happens if we change AUG? This will have actually a couple of effects. This is a non-synonymous mutation. What if we change that to AUA? Well, in this example, because this is the start code on this, will have two effects on the protein. The first is, when a ribosome binds the cap and translates, slides down the messenger RNA molecule to find that start codon, there now is no AUG in this gene anymore. So first of all, the ribosome wouldn't translate this messenger RNA at all. There's no start codon. But if there were, for example, if it was upstream and the ribosome was moving down and translating codons, when it encountered an AUG, instead of encoding methionine, AUA encodes a different amino acid, isoleucine. And so we have a non-synonymous mutation. It's a point mutation, a single nucleotide change, but it changes the amino acid that's encoded. And that's the definition of a non-synonymous mutation. We also have nonsense mutations. In this case, if the third position, this second G of the tryptophan, changed to UGA, so a G to A mutation, UGA encodes a stop codon. So in this case, a ribosome would read AUG, GAA, AAG, and then UGA and stop translation there instead of adding this final tryptophan and stopping at the next codon. So this mutation causes a truncated, a slightly shorter protein, and it encodes what are, what's called a nonsense codon, one of the three stop codons. The three stop codons are called nonsense codons as well. And so in this case, we've made a mutation that's created a new stop codon. The last one to look at is a frame shift mutation. So what happens if I add an A right there? This is going to be a frame shift. So now we still have AUG. That's where the ribosome is going to start reading. GAA, but now we have 
the next three nucleotides are A, 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 we've shifted the reading frame. A, 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 now we have G, U, G, G, U, A, and a G, and some other nucleotides potentially that would continue being translated. So note two things. First, we don't have a stop codon yet, meaning the ribosome would keep sliding down this messenger RNA molecule, translating for potentially a very long time. The other thing that's happened is that, let's see what's happened to the amino acid sequence. We still have a methionine, we still have GAA, which encodes glutamic acid. Now we have AAA, which is lysine, GUG, sorry, a, a, yep, and GUG, GUA, and so forth. So these are different amino acids, you'll notice, than the amino acids that were up here. We've got GUG, GUA. Look those up on a codon table and bring them to class next time so we can discuss what is the actual protein that's encoded by this new transcript that's got this frame shifting mutation. So a frame shifting mutation, to summarize, is one that makes the ribosome read sets of three nucleotides or codons that are different than it did originally without the mutation. And if you insert one nucleotide, that usually causes a frame shift. If you insert two nucleotides, that causes a frame shift. But if you insert or delete three or multiples of three, then that erases an entire codon. So for example, you could imagine a type of mutation that eliminates one entire codon, GAA, from the original, the original transcript. So then you'd have AUG, AAG, UGG. You'd still have the same protein sequence, M, but you wouldn't have that glutamic acid here. It's been deleted, that whole set of three nucleotides and that codon. But then the amino acid sequence would be the same as the rest of the protein had been, R, W, stop codon. So those are a few different types of mutations and the effects that they have on the proteins that are produced after translation.